wow, working in the dark, it's, it's always has its challenges. So if you want to do the job right and safe the first time, you got to be able to see what you're doing. That's where Olight comes in with a line of accessories that makes doing tasks a lot easier. With the swivel work light, you get two features, a floodlight and a spotlight in a compact foldable zone. It's the first COB plus LED work light, which means the floodlight can be wider while the spotlight can throw light further. On a single charge, the swivel can run for days. Plus it has a stand with magnets that allow you to put it just about anywhere. Next, we have the Array 2, which is a compact headlamp that has three light levels with a SOS setting included. It also has a swivel up to 60 degrees so you can aim it right where you need it. Besides lights, Olight offers Splint, which is a premium quality foldable knife. The Splint is stainless steel, good for piercing, slicing, and skinning, and even meets FDA food safety standards. It's nice and compact with a pocket clip, which makes it easy to carry when you're on the move. So go check out the Olight Swivel, Splint, Array 2, and mention the Olight O-Fan Day Sale for up to 50% off. How you doing? My name is Jeff Ray, featured guest host here with Weld.com. Gonna do an introductory video on how to TIG weld some stainless steel for beginners. These are some of the things and practices that I started with and I think they're gonna be very helpful. So let's get at it. So we got all our pieces here tacked up that we're gonna be welding on today. I got a lap joint here. We're gonna go ahead and fuse some of it. This is where we're gonna start. Then I'm gonna add some wire as well. I got this full lap corner to corner fit up here. I'm gonna show you how to fuse the inside of this as well as the outside without burning through either one of the sides here. And then I got a T joint here as well. Remember this stuff is very thin so it's, it's hard to make fits in joints like this without burning through this stuff. So I'm just gonna share some of the little tricks and stuff that I know that has helped me over the years with this. I feel this thin gauge stuff is perfect for beginners because it really shows you to pay attention to what you're doing because the thicker material is easy to handle and deal with. This stuff is the stuff that takes the finesse. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that and uh, let's get at it. We're gonna utilize the Everlast Power TIG 255 EXT. We got it set on DC high freak TIG start and set at 45 amps. All right, so we're gonna start with doing backward C's. I feel like this really helps me uh, learn how to manipulate the material. I'm taking that top material and swooshing it down and washing it into the bottom material there. You don't want to stay on one side longer than the other for you'll burn through or you can open one side up. So backward C's is practice, practice, practice. Got my uh, Heat set at 45 amps, same as I did when I was just fusing that. Utilizing the baller, a Vesta. All right, I got both these welds made. They both look really good. I'm pleased with the gas coverage I got here. The Furic BBW cup does its job. I wanna talk about this fusion weld here. I think this is gonna be the most critical part for you beginners out there. 
it really shows how to use that arc to control your puddle. So by doing these backward C's, you're actually controlling that puddle and moving that top material down to the bottom. And I think this is gonna be the best way to show you beginners how to utilize that arc in controlling your puddle. Over here, we added our Bowler Avesta 308 L wire. I used the 045. I got no burn through on this. I ran both of these welds at 45 amps and uh, they both turned out really nice front and back. So uh, we're gonna head over here and we're gonna do the full lap uh, corner to corner weld. I'm gonna show you how to fuse the inside of this without burning through the outside now. So we got the inside weld here done and fused. It looks great. If you see here, I went ahead and backed it with uh, some aluminum. That's gonna help prevent the material back here from sugaring at all. It's gonna act as a backing gas or something for us. So uh, you see here, our weld's nice and silver. We had no burn through. That's gonna make for a good weld on the outside. If you got that sugar on the outside, it's hard to burn that stuff out of there. And most likely you're gonna end up with sugar on the inside too. We don't want that. So remember, back this stuff if you think you're gonna burn through because if you gotta weld that other side, it's not gonna weld very nice. And sugar, you, you, you got a bad weld already at that point. So now I'm gonna get this thing set up and we'll go ahead and roll that outside edge and not burn through to the inside. All right, so I got the outside part of this welded out now. Outside looks really good. Gas coverage is good. Color looks good. Inside looks pretty good. Maybe a touch of sugar in there in one spot, but looks pretty good other than that. Same thing here with the last weld. The most important thing I could tell you is arc control. Learning how to move that puddle and make it do what you want. By taking that top material and moving it down. Fusion welding, I feel, has helped me the most with arc control and puddle control. So practice, practice, practice. I can and not emphasize that enough. You wanna become proficient at something, that's how you do it, is practice. Um, and the best way to get better at it is to by making mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. So by doing this, messing up, I don't care if you mess up 10 times, that's 10 times of knowledge that you just learned what not to do. So you're only gonna get better from then on out. Just keep practicing. Now we're gonna go over to the T-joint and see if we can lay a T-joint down here without burning through at all. This takes a lot of control, not just with the arc, your wire. You don't wanna use too big of wire because then you're trying to melt the wire rather than your base material. So. Uh, we get that piece over here and make another weld.
So we got the uh, the T joint here made, weld made. Looks really good. Nice silver color. We had good gas coverage. Same thing. I welded it on 45 amps, just like the other ones. No burn through at all. I say this is for beginners because this is the best place I feel for you guys to learn. You're going to start to do it and think it is super hard because you're going to burn through and you're going to have a lot of trouble. But this is where you're going to learn the most. So I think to become the most proficient welder you can, you need to start at the hard parts. When I go to weld something, I do the hardest part first. Get it out of the way and then everything is gravy after that. So until next time, head over to weld.com and check out our members section to connect with us directly as well as head over to our members forum where you can ask questions and our advisors can help you with anything. So let's get at it. I'll see you next time on weld.com.